talk to you for a little bit about the resurrection of the body of Christ. Some people would call it the rapture issue. I realize rapture is a Latin word and whatever else, but uh, pre-trib rapture, post-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath, all the different things. I've studied it all. Um, before I get into it, I'm going to show you the trail that I'm on currently. Uh, I have to get down this trail here. You can see how steep it is going down there. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to try to talk as I'm walking here. I um, went up this trail here in the last video. Um, <clears throat> but I want to talk about this issue because a lot of people, they come along and they've seen a few videos on YouTube or something and, and they think that they are experts and Bible scholars and whatever else as a result. Um, just to give you a real, real quick history of myself, I was born and raised going to church buildings. been to many different ones over the years. And uh, I was had older men of the church pray over me, essentially ordaining me for the ministry and um, counting me faithful. And uh, for all the different service that I did, going door to door and preaching on the street and all the other stuff. Um, so if you want to go with biblical ordination, yes, I am ordained. I don't have a seminary education, so to speak, but I have, you know, beyond that, quite frankly, because I've been studying for just manuscript evidence. I've been studying that for 24 years. But the rapture issue, I've been studying even longer. I would say probably more along the lines of 30 years. I studied that even before I got saved. And uh, no, it didn't lead me to salvation, but it was part of understanding what it means to be saved. And um, I'm seeing a lot of ignorance in the comments. A lot of people, they come along and they say, Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You fell for the rapture lie. Um, well, the funny thing is I've already covered all of those things in different videos. Um, things are a little bit slippery here if, the, if these rocks are wet. That's why I have to be really careful. But I've covered that stuff. And people want to engage me in, you know, comment battles or something like this. And I don't do that. I'm not going to waste my time sitting around for hours uh, in little comment section. You know, no, I'm not doing that. Um, I am interested in getting the word out, and I will listen to people's arguments and whatever, and if there's a new argument, which I don't really see that many new arguments, but if there's a new argument, I'll answer that in a video. But um, if you're really looking for the truth, the Lord will lead you to an understanding that the body of Christ is taken out before the Antichrist is revealed. And I've done plenty of studies to prove that. And if you don't have that system, then you start to get into a weird system of faith and works. Because that's the system that's there in the time of Jacob's trouble. And um, if you get into that system of faith and works, then you get into the system of you can lose your salvation. Which is the biggest problem with the whole thing of the notion that Christians go into this time of Jacob's trouble. Again, it's never called the Great Tribulation in the King James Bible. Um, can't speak from the Vatican versions. They say all kinds of wicked stuff. The ones that go back to Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, the 19th century Masonic forgery, um, which is what I believe. But the King James Bible never says the Great Tribulation um, as a title. It's the tribulation of those days, and you know there shall be great tribulation upon the earth. But it's never given as a title. And so one of the big uh, problems comes from people you know, thinking... Great tribulation, because there's verses that say, you know, that you'll have tribulation. So you go through the tribulation. No. Um, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Very important to understand that. And one of the arguments I saw in the comments, somebody said, well, um, just a basic understanding of Scripture. You know, you see that Noah went through, you know, he was spared from the, the flood, but he went through the flood. Lot was, you know, spared from Sodom and Gomorrah, but he was still, he stayed on the earth. And all the people, they stay on the earth. Um, well, I can, I've already gone through those in other studies, but just to kind of sum up the whole thing there, um, the New Testament gives a different situation. Behold, I show you a mystery. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. Paul describes what this mystery is. Mystery is something that hasn't been revealed yet. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I show you a mystery, things that we've known about for thousands of years. It's not a mystery. So a unique thing happens. 
We shall not all sleep, we shall, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. What is that? Um, how are you going to be changed in, a, in the twinkling of an eye if you just are here and you stay here and whatever else? Paul's talking about being called up. And when you're called up, you receive your corruptible flesh becomes incorruptible. This mortal shall put, out, shall put on immortality. It's a unique event. So to say, well, we have to compare it to the Old Testament. You're showing your ignorance of Scripture. It's a unique, mysterious event that has not been previously revealed. Okay? Not really that hard to figure this stuff out, unless you're lost. Um, so you go into this time of Jacob's trouble. People say, oh, we're going to go through it. The church is going to have to go through it. Why? Why does the church need further purification? It's kind of an issue. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Unless you're a postie, then you have to be cleansed some more in the future. With your suffering. You have to unite your suffering to the suffering of Jesus Christ. Oh, that sounds kind of Catholic to me. Oh, uh, yeah, because the Catholic Church is the one that has always taught that the church has to go through a time of final purification. Again, I've covered it. I've shown it from the catechism. Um, whatever. Well, this is John Nelson Darby's lie. John Nelson Darby came up with the rapture theory. No, he didn't. Um... <laughs> Again, I've proved that in other studies. Oh, uh, well, uh, the Jesuit Ribeiro, he came up with this thing. Manuel Lacunza, they came up with this whole thing. It's a Jesuit lie. No, it's not. No, it's not. I've proved that again. If you actually look at the readings, it says it's a post-trib rapture. So people don't know what they're talking about. Um, I proved it. It's been proven. It's all on my channel. Just go to the you know search thing on my channel page and type in, you know, Manuel Lacunza or the... You know, Jesuits did not create the rapture or something like that. Um, again, the Catholic Church has taught uh, this whole post-trib thing for years. They are the ones that believe that Jesus Christ's death on the cross is not enough to pay for their sins. That's why they have to go to Mass. That's why they have to confess their sins, a regular confession and the whole thing. And they have to go through this final time of purification. That's what they teach. That's what they believe. So... Um, you get into that stuff. That's why I've said over the years, you get somebody that's a, I mean, you get brand new Christian again. You know, I understand things. Brand new Christian, they fall for some of the post-trib stuff. Okay, I'll have grace. But you have somebody that's just dead set in their ways. We are going through this time. You're lost. You don't truly understand salvation. The resurrection, you know, is what I'm talking about here. And Jesus Christ is the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. Okay. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't have to believe the exact thing about the resurrection. Well, then you're denying Jesus Christ, ultimately. All right. Um, the body of Christ and the Antichrist are not on the earth at the same time. Period. Your opinions don't matter. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. You say, well, that's the Antichrist or something. That's a stupid thing at Ruckman and uh, um, Brian Donovan. He teaches the same thing. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Um, not accurate to the scriptures. Uh, how do you know? Because John goes up before the Antichrist is revealed in Revelation 6. John goes up Revelation 4, Antichrist is revealed Revelation chapter 6, and that part of Revelation is chronological. Okay, just compare Scripture with Scripture. Who are the 24 elders? Again, 24 elders. Oh, they're the, the 12, um, <clears throat> the 12 apostles and the 12, you know, uh, Jacob and his brothers or something like this, or the sons of Jacob or all this. Read plain English, okay? Thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, people, tongue, and nation. How many nations are there? How many natural boundaries are there? There's 12. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 32. I've gotten into all the scriptures, all the studies, but, you know, um, I have to spend years doing the research, years putting the studies together, hours and hours and hours of preaching and editing and whatever else, and then I'm supposed to engage somebody in the comment section. Yeah, because they're too lazy to watch my videos, to actually go through the scriptures. Because, oh, Denlinger's just another uh, YouTube um, webcam wonder pastor or something. No, I'm not. Um, I've been preaching and teaching the Word of God uh, longer than I've been on YouTube. So, um, you can watch the studies and learn. Uh, take some time to, to actually educate yourself about the resurrection. It is the blessed hope purifying hope. Um, it's a wonderful thing to understand that doctrine, very important doctrine. Um, and if you don't study it, well, <laughs> what can I say? Um, 
then you know, you know the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If uh, you don't study, then you are going to be ashamed before him at his coming. I'll tell you that. You know, there might be somebody that's genuinely saved, like I said, brand new, born again Christian, and they get led astray by a bunch of lying devils on YouTube or wherever else. You know, have their faith undermined in the catching up of the body of Christ. That's the next event that's going to happen. And um, they'll have their faith destroyed by some devil, and then they'll be ashamed before Jesus Christ at his coming because they'll, they're not looking for him. I am looking for Jesus Christ. Uh, I really am. Um, but to say, again, the doctrine of imminence, I've preached against that because the imminence thing is that it was imminent at any time in church history, which is ridiculous. Uh, that, you know, in other words, you could have had the rapture happen before the rebirth of the nation of Israel or some of the other prophecies like that, um, which is weird to say the least. You know, we could have had the rapture could have happened, in other words, or the catching up of the body of Christ. I'm just using the word rapture, but. You know, the catching up of the body of Christ could have happened in 1000 AD and we would have, you know, another thousand plus years of, you know, what? Uh, people, I guess, couldn't get saved in that thousand year period or something. Or, Yeah, it's, it's bizarre. It's bizarre, this, these weird teachings. Now, you know, right now you could say that the catching up is imminent. Um, you know, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, there's a few prophecies that are kind of, I think, a little bit more out there in the future that are given in the Pauline epistles um, that we follow. And as a Christian, you follow the Pauline epistles. By the way, that's another thing. Watch out for the people that try to take you to Matthew 24. Every post he does, every single time, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. Every single time. I've dealt with it for years and argued with these people for years. The Bible says immediately after the tribulation. So that means after the tribulation, the rapture happens. <laughs> And then they say, there's no pre-trib rapture mentioned in the Bible. Oh, is there a post-trib rapture? Yes. Immediately after the tribulation. Um, no, that's Jesus coming back. Okay. And it's after the tribulation of those days. Again, have whole studies. Lots of going through the scriptures every time the word tribulation appears. A whole study on that. Uh, I've done the work. Okay. You can watch it. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. But, you know, oh, well, I, I don't know, I don't have time because I saw one video and now I'm convinced I'm a Bible scholar or something. Um, no, you're not. So, um, I could just keep going on and on about it. You know, again, the Pauline epistles, where's there mention anything on, in there about losing your salvation or you have to endure to the end or anything like that? It's not there. Okay, so if the body of Christ is going into this time of Jacob's trouble, it's coming, then the Apostle Paul never prepared us for it. <laughs> Just another one of the many arguments. Again, preacher rapture scriptures in all the Pauline epistles. You know, going through, proving it, scripture after scripture, argument after argument. Um, my expository studies going through. So, um, if you're a postie, you know, I try to give people liberty and things. Try to let people write their comments, and no matter how stupid they are, sometimes. And um, I will say it's stupid because it is stupid, the post-trib thing. Um, but, you know, some of it I just, I don't want to tolerate it because they're just trying to come and destroy people's faith. And, um, you know, to you people out there, let me just say this. You're never going to wreck my faith, okay? I am fully set in my ways. Um, you're wasting your time trying to talk me out of the King James Bible and out of the uh, catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Don't waste my time, okay? I'm not a child that you can get with your little mind control stuff and whatever else. Um... You know, there are saints in heaven. John goes up to heaven before the Antichrist is released. So don't waste my time. But uh, that will be it for this video. And I'll put some stuff at the end here, some playlists and whatever else that go through all the sermons I've mentioned, give you all the proof that you want. Take some time and educate yourself. At least, even if you don't want to agree with me, just at least see my arguments. Pray about it. Okay? And uh, get saved. Okay? Because if you're a radical postie, you are literally saying that it's your works. You have a part in your salvation. You have to suffer in the future. And if you're a postie, by the way, too, you have no business being on YouTube watching me. You have to prepare. You're facing seven years. We're out here. A third of these trees are going to be burned up. Are you prepared for it? Are you growing all of your own food? 
Do you have a job that you can just quit and walk away from and live seven years without an income? What are you going to do about your driver's license? What are you going to do about your bank account? Please. You're on YouTube and you're a postie. Uh-huh, right. So that's going to be it. Uh, thank you for watching.